Um, this one's wife, grifting money and finding freebies. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Further criticism of the behaviour of this one's wife, Kel Surprise. They've been accused of trying to have their cake and eat it too. Stepping away from the restrictive lifestyle of a working royal, nullification of threat to control, while simultaneously wanting all the prestige and perks that come with being a member of royalty. Hypocrisy. And while Prince Harry and this one's wife haven't been officially tied to the monarchy for four years now, losing their honorary titles and HRH prefixes following the late Queen Elizabeth's edict that they were either to be fully in or fully out of the monarchy, they've seemingly still continued to live a quasi-royal life. Both tend to fashion themselves as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex more readily than their civilian names. This one's wife does that, of course, because it enables her to triangulate people with that name. And they also tend to mix and mingle with international dignitaries and change-makers in a manner usually reserved for the most high-ranking members of society. Delusion, grandiosity. Their recent trip to Nigeria, which had all the markings of a royal tour, was no exception. But crucially, there is a big difference between how Harry and this one's wife handled their affairs compared to the rest of the Royal Brigade. And that's when it comes to earning money and accepting freebies. No sooner had they stepped down as senior royals in 2020 than they'd signed multi-million dollar deals with the likes of Netflix, Penguin Random House and Spotify, while also accepting thousands for making personal appearances across the globe. Still, it's the delicate issue of accepting gifts and freebies that has put Harry and this one's wife more at odds than ever with the expectations placed upon royal members and has landed them in hot water again following their Nigeria tour. In just three days, the couple were lavish with gifts that included paintings, traditional clothing, personalised merchandise, traditional jewellery and books, and took it all back home with them to Monty Shitshow. Of course, they're no longer tied to Buckingham Palace, which keeps a strongly monitored record of all gifts received by members of the monarchy, and also follows a strict royal protocol over when and how they are allowed to accept such gifts. Still, the fact that Harry and this one's wife still seem to cash in on their royal credentials while simultaneously accepting freebies, hypocrisy, has not gone unnoticed, with royal commentators saying they're taking things far too far. But according to insiders, the pair don't see anything wrong with their behaviour. Well, of course not. Harry's too dim and entitled himself to realise, and this one's wife won't see anything because her narcissism blinds her to this behaviour. She regards this as the perk, that she can swan around pretending to be a royal, even though she's not actually working one, and use that to grift for freebies. Harry and this one's wife are rolling their eyes at the criticism against them getting freebies, says an insider close to the couple, who celebrated their sixth wedding anniversary recently. If something comes their way, what are they supposed to do? Send it back. If they do that, they'll be branded ungrateful. Well, you can do it quietly so nobody knows that you're doing it. So they feel like they can't win. That's just this one's wife rolling out an excuse. Oh, I can't send it back. People will think I'm ungrateful. They get free clothes, furniture, beauty and hair care treatments. Five-star vacations. It's one thing for celebrities like the Kardashians to accept freebies. They're reality stars, so it's expected of them. But Harry and this one's wife are judged by a different standard. And everyone is watching them like hawks. Eyebrows were raised earlier this month as the gifts kept coming during the pair's visit to Nigeria. Despite it being a private trip, it bore all the hallmarks of a royal tour, with a formal welcome ceremony, PR-heavy visits to schools and charities, political engagements, and an artfully curated wardrobe for this one's wife that paid tribute to their host country. While there, they were duly lavished with gifts that included a painting of Harry and his late mother, Princess Diana, another one of him and this one's wife, 
traditional coral drop earrings for this one's wife, and wooded, wooden beaded necklaces for both of them. Nigerian outfits, scarves, drawings, literature and personalised t-shirts emblazoned with the slogan Harry Dreams Big and This One's Wife Dreams Big. By all accounts, all offerings went back with them to the United States. Well, of course they would do so because This One's Wife would regard them subconsciously as residual benefits and deem herself entitled to them. This One's Wife and Harry are, of course, not bound by any rules when it comes to receiving gifts, unlike the strict protocol the royal family have to deal with. According to royal official policy, last updated in 2003, royals are not allowed to personally own gifts from government or civic bodies, armed services, charities or guilds. A royal record is kept of all official gifts handed to the royal family and most are placed on display or are loaned out to reputable organisations. Gifts from people not known to the royal in question are to be refused when there are concerns about the propriety or motives of the donor. The bottom line is that the royals are not to be shown in any way to endorse any brand or body. They can't even accept gifts when they get married. Now, all of that, of course, is anathema to this one's wife. In it for the grift, in it for the freebies, she was horrified when she learned of the applicability of this royal protocol to her receiving gifts. Naturally, the greed that's exhibited by her narcissism caused her to believe that she should be entitled to all of these gifts, that she should get all of these freebies as a perk of who she was, and on being told that she couldn't, that, naturally, was a significant threat to control. Meanwhile, this one's wife and Harry have steadily gained a reputation for taking a different approach to freebies and gifts. Earlier this year, they accepted a free trip to Jamaica for the premiere of the Bob Marley biopic One Love, travelling on a private jet paid for by Paramount Pictures, before staying for free at the five-star Half Moon Resort in Montego Bay. After leaving the United Kingdom for the United States in 2020, they famously stayed as guests of producer Tyler Perry in his L.A. mansion. Meanwhile, while defending this one's wife's kindness and generosity in his memoir Spare, Harry wrote that while still working as a royal, she shared all the freebies she received, clothes and perfumes and makeup, with all the women in the office. Well, that's because she couldn't keep them. So she wasn't actually being that generous. She was simply giving away things that she couldn't keep. And, of course, as a narcissist, she was engaging in that behaviour for the purpose of asserting control over the staff and drawing fuel from them. Last year, royal biographer Tom Bauer dubbed the former royals, who are parents to Archie Five and Elizabeth II, as scroungers, and said they made constant demands for expenses because they want to live for nothing. Sense of entitlement, lack of accountability. He added, it's about Harry and this one's wife constantly looking for freebies, and whether it's jets, houses, meals, whatever. And that is in the end what drove Spotify and also Netflix mad. This came after one Spotify executive labelled them fucking grifters. Now, as this one's wife continues to launch her new lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard Retirement Homes, it's likely she'll be sent even more freebies and gifts, as companies vie to be featured on her website and Instagram page. Mm, I won't be so sure about that. But while insiders have warned that if she and Harry wish to continue mixing in quasi-royal titles, they need to follow more austere measures. We're told they're unfussed. As far as they're concerned, Hollywood is a long way away from Buckingham Palace and different rules apply. Haughtiness, dismissiveness. They're being told not to take it too far, we're told. But Harry and this one's wife are always going to do what they want to do. That's just who they are. Well, of course it is. That's reported by Heat magazine, and it demonstrates the sense of entitlement that both exhibit, and particularly this one's wife, with regard to the absence of accountability as a consequence of her narcissism. She's always grifting the money. She's always looking for those freebies. The reason being, she regards them as things that she's entitled to by virtue of who she is. She regards this as an appropriate and necessary perk. She regards it as things that she should be receiving simply for turning up, and she sees nothing wrong with receiving such gifts. Of course, once again, blinded to the other issues that arise from such acceptance and use of her quasi-royal status. Her narcissism, once again, blinding her to such behaviours. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.